This video is going to be about force webs. A force web is a diagram that shows an object, all the other objects that are directly putting a force on that object, and the type of force is being applied. To draw a force web, you're going to start by writing the name of the main object in your problem and drawing a circle around it, and then writing the names of every object that is directly putting a force on the object in step number one and drawing circles around them as well. Step number three, you're going to draw a line between any two objects that are putting a force on each other, label the line with the name of the force, and this line represents the force. Sometimes objects put more than one force on each other, and for these you'll just draw more than one line. So we'll give you an example. A force web draws all the objects in a problem in circles. Lines connect the circles to show forces on the object. So they're all going to look like this. So let's say that we have this person who's tripped and is falling through the air and is not being supported by anything. Here I can see that the force of gravity is acting on him, and that's it. That's the only force that's acting on him. And I know that the force of gravity comes from the Earth, like the entire Earth pulling down on you like this. And so these would be the two objects in my first problem, the person and the Earth. Those are the only two objects that are putting a force on each other. So between them is the force of gravity. The Earth is pulling the person down with gravity. And as we'll learn later in class, the person is actually also pulling the Earth up with gravity. They're putting a mutual force on each other. But we'll talk about that more later. So Earth is actually going to be an object in basically every one of your problems involving force webs because gravity is basically always present anywhere near the Earth. Let's look at another problem. Here we have a book sitting on a table. So we know that the force of gravity is pulling the book down, and because the table is a surface, it's supporting the book by putting a normal force up on the book. So I can see here that because the Earth is still creating that force of gravity, that's going to be one of the objects in my problem, and the other object is going to be the table and obviously the book itself. So I can just connect these with the forces that they're putting on the book. So the book is putting gravity on the Earth, Earth's putting gravity on the book, and then I connect these, and the normal force is acting between these two objects. I could also talk about what's going on between the table and the Earth, but I don't care about that so much. I'm really just worried about the book. That's kind of like the main central object in my problem. Let's say that we have these two people trying to pull this cart in different directions. So on the cart, I have gravity, normal, the force of tension this way, and a smaller force of tension this way. So these are my objects involved in the problem. The cart, the earth, the ground, and two ropes on either end of the cart. Some students get a little confused, and they're curious about why both the earth and the ground are in the same force web. It seems like they're the same thing. And the ground is what I'm calling the immediate surface that the cart is on that's putting a normal force on the cart. Whereas the Earth is putting the force of gravity on the cart. The Earth is the entire Earth. Literally everything that is on the Earth is putting the force of gravity on the cart. And then the two ropes attached to the cart are putting the force of tension on the cart. They're different sized forces, but we don't really represent the sizes of forces on force webs. Size really comes in with free body diagrams, but not with force webs. So that's how you would draw a force web for this situation. And that's all that you need to know about force webs. You can copy these three steps down if you would like, um, but the main goal is to have you do a ton of these problems so that you get good at them.